Hi. I'm still figuring this out. Uh, my name is Michael, uh, also known as Banshee Milk, also known as Cadaver Joe. Uh, hey, you guys like dead things? What about animate dead things? You know, uh, like, I don't mean like a table, you know, I'm talking about something moves around, you know, like, uh, Look, I'm not good at starting videos. Let me tell you, there's a, mo there's a movie I'm here to talk to you about called uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead, 1978's Dawn of the Dead. Not the Zack Snyder one, which is entertaining enough, but I'm here to talk to you about the one you didn't bother watching. Directed by George R. Romero of Night of the Living Dead fame, this is the follow-up, the sequel um, it's, uh, so a band of survivors, right? They're like, uh, we would prefer to survive. They don't care to die in these moments. And so they go, they find a shopping mall, right? So they go to a shopping mall, and they're like, oh my goodness, great. There's so many myriad, uh, products and good things to survive with. Because, you know, in a shopping mall, you can find clothing and ham uh, you could, uh, rifles, pants, you know what I mean? This place has all the pants they could ever want. So they go, we're going to take over this shopping mall, right? And they take over, they sweep it, get rid of all the zombies. They, they stay and they live in the shopping mall, okay? Um, and, uh, then, but horrors, of course, continue to happen. The, the zombies are not, uh, they're, they're, they're bitey, you know, and they're really dangerous. It's not that they want to. They're not like, I guess they're not evil. They're, they don't desire flesh. It's not like, ooh, I'm craving it today. It's more of a, just an instinct, like, a, 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 you know, like, like blinking, you know. And, and um, so anyway, George Romero did this. He couldn't get a lot of, he was having trouble financing it back then. Um Lucio Fulci, the Italian horror film director, loved Night of the Living Dead, came to his aid. They got financing. They made it. Uh, fun fact, this is also the first horror film with the wonderful makeup of Tom Savini. Uh, now, if you're a perfectionist, you might go, oh, I don't like this movie. The zombies are all blue and stuff. Let me explain something to you. Tom Savini's a genius. The reason they're blue, yes, mistakes were made, but... He was trying to... It was the first one in color, right? Because Night of the Living Dead was in black and white. So they were like, how do we... He didn't want it to feel too different. So he he actually painted the people gray. A very mild, bluish hue, you know? To make them look a little more like they did in the black and white movie. Um, later he had some regrets because by doing so, in a world of color, you know, you paint someone gray, even mildly blue... It's going to come off very blue. Because I've, if you notice, I don't like to judge people by the color of their skin, but if you notice when you're out in public, you don't see a lot of friggin' blue people. You know what I mean? They tend to be like, uh, they tend to be like not blue, right? And so you go, uh, ooh, I just noticed. Look at the my lips. I don't like the red. Anyway, uh, uh, I, just, I apologize. So... Uh, this is one of the greatest zombie movies ever made. If you can just get past flaws of makeup, focus on the story, focus on the violent, the gore. Uh, now you, some people complain, oh, the blood is too red. Romero wanted that. He was going for a horror comic book aesthetic. In the horror comics, the blood was red like it was cherry juice or something. You know, uh, uh, bright, bright Hunt's ketchup uh, uh, red. A crimson, uh, you know, th this has a lot of humor. You have to understand, this movie has a lot of social commentary, political kind of... For example, the zombies in this, they don't really have, like, deep memories, but they've got, like, very mild residual... Like, a loved one who's turned into a zombie will still bite you, but they've got um, habits, right? Like, if they were modern ones, they'd probably be holding cell phones, but because it's 1978, what's happening is a lot of these zombies, they're just mulling through the mall. like this. And at one point he goes, this is a place that was important to them or whatnot. I'm paraphrasing. And uh, you see, like, pushing shopping carts. And they're not actually shopping or anything. It's just like this instinct, like they did this all the time, you know. And um, 
there's something kind of cool about that because you know the movie has statements to make which is cool that on the surface you get cool gory zombie action and on the underneath the uh, subtext mind you it's uh it's uh there's more to be enjoyed in this film um so my recommendations if you're a big horror buff i would say check out this movie man if you haven't um if you aren't a big horror movie but like social commentary i say check it out if you don't like either avoid this movie it's not for you go watch uh while you were sleeping or so that was about a zombie too but uh no way. He was just a guy in a coma. That wasn't a zombie. That was Peter Gallagher, who had uh, the thickest eyebrows this side of uh, Eyebrow County, which was a wonderful county with really special eyebrows. Um, God, I really need to lose weight. And my neck is like, you guys seeing this? I got more necks than a, than a, a, a Louisiana church sale now some people are confused about which is the true sequel to Night of the Living Dead because there's also Return of the Living Dead a very fun movie in its own right um, there were a couple of people involved with Night of the Living Dead George Romero and Dan O'Bannon George Romero being the primary fella um, as evidenced by Dawn of the Dead being a bit more of a serious film. Now, Return of the Living Dead was done by Dan O'Bannon as almost a horror comedy. This is where brains comes from, you know, where people like to think zombies are always saying brains. That's because of Return of the Living Dead. Very fun movie. Um, uh, uh, check that out, too. But uh, the official sequel would be George Romero's Dawn of the Dead because it follows, it's more in line with what was going on in Night of the Living Dead. It's... Um, you see that the rural areas, countryside, uh, that was also ravaged by zombies, but not nearly as bad as cities, which is, you know, stands to reason that cities would be worse. You've got a higher uh, population density. You've got um, uh, a lot of factors that go into it. I'm, I forgot I wanted to show you guys this painting I did of the zombie Stephen eating tacos. Thank mm -hmm. you.